another writing tips vlog today. I've had a couple requests to do something about villains. It's also another <sighs> Vicky. One of the more realistic things you can do is have more than one villain. In real life, a lot of people don't have that one nemesis. If you have multiple villains in the story, then you can have varying degrees of evil. That way it takes the pressure off too, so you don't have to worry about shoving a whole fistful of super evil down your villain's throat. Imagine your story as a bunch of pages with a bookend on each side. The one bookend is the hero, on the other bookend is the villain. There's this symmetry. So you have the hero's story, which is what most people only focus on when they're writing. They're thinking of the hero's journey from beginning to end. But we should also be looking at, as you're writing, is the reverse. The villain's story from beginning to end. So you have the hero working this way, the villain working this way. When you're writing a story that has that type of symmetry and dynamic, you actually have two stories happening simultaneously. The best way to write a villain in that situation is to write that villain as if they're the hero of their own story. Here's another analogy. Think of it as being a mirror. On the one side of the mirror you have the hero, on the other side of the mirror you have the villain. Think of your story when you're writing as it you actually have two conflicting heroes from different perspectives. Because the villains that I found to be the most effective are the ones that think that what they're doing is right. So villains who are doing the exact same thing as the hero pretty much, they're pursuing their cause, their quest, thinking that they are in the right. The only difference is you're putting the readers in the situation to believe that the hero is the moral central of the story. You could easily write the whole story from the villain's perspective and make the villain the hero, making the villain the moral center of the story. When you do that, the hero becomes the villain. Take all of the effort that you're putting into hero and put that same amount of effort into the villain. You should be developing the villain the exact same way you would develop the hero. So learning all of their nuances, the little quirks. You should be doing equal amounts of research and story building around the hero and the villain because they're the two most important people in your story. It shouldn't be all this character building goes into the hero, but then the villain is just this abstract idea of evil and the villain also needs to be a character, needs to be human. Give your villain some positive traits. There's different degrees of villainy, obviously. So if you have a villain who is just so super evil and drowns puppies in his spare time, you're probably thinking, I can't really give him any positive traits because it's a horrible person. Giving your villain some positive traits isn't necessarily to get the reader to like them. What you're doing is making this person a more three-dimensional character who is more interesting and engaging. For example, one of my favorite villain types of all time is the villain who is so super rotten to the core and you hate them, but this person is also very charismatic and fun to be around. The life of the party character who is actually evil and you know is evil, but you can't help but like them in that moment. Also, you could try giving your villain a soft spot. There's another thing that not everybody thinks about with the villains because it's like, why? But again, it's another thing that adds dimension to the character. So, for example, why is this the only example I could think of? Maybe your villain's a mass murderer, but one day when he's walking through the woods, you know, plotting his next act of genocide, he sees this gang of 12-year-old kids shoot a baby deer just for fun. And it oddly disturbs him. And maybe you never go into why, but that incident leaves some type of mark. That's just my example. Like, unexpected things. Because the villain's still human, so there's things like that could sneak up and surprise them too, which might not necessarily make them change their way of thinking or behavior, but it suggests that there are things there in their mind lurking very, very far back. Little seeds of doubt. But this drives me nuts. This drives me so crazy. And people do it with villains and heroes. Many writers try to revolve their hero or villain's life around a single traumatic incident that somehow accounts for all of their future behavior. That's not how it works in real life. Real people aren't that simple. Real people are complicated. In real life, a lot of people do experience life-changing tragedies that will affect them for the rest of their days. But the thing is, not everybody who experiences something absolutely horrible goes out to become a villain and build an empire. And what you need to figure out is why that traumatic thing turned him or her down the path of villainy when it might not have turned someone else down that same path. What about your character's essential makeup, the psychology of it all that they already had there before the incident? What made them unable to let go of that incident? Don't just use it as an excuse to make this person a bad person. If your hero and your villain are arch nemesis, you need to figure out why. Please try not to use destiny as an excuse. Even in a fantasy book or a sci-fi book, it's not all that believable. What if I'm more effective is linking the hero and the villain through a series of coincidences, right place, wrong time, chance encounters that end up kind of weaving their tapestries of life together. Try to think of them as two people who cross paths in the worst way. For example, maybe the hero wasn't ever actually the target of your villain. Maybe the target was actually the hero's sister, but the hero has become a roadblock simply by being that person's sister. And in that, ends up becoming the villain's target as well. 
decide if your villain's ever going to be redeemed. Most writers don't redeem their villains in their stories, but if your villain is going to be redeemed, figure out the how and the why. I would like to see a villain who's the epitome of villainy taking a turn towards redemption. Now that the villain has decided to take this whole path, the hero is now at a loss and has lost his or her purpose and also probably feels a lot of resentment towards the villain. Because the villain's obviously done something to piss the hero off. So now the villain is on his way to becoming a hero or at least a decent human being. So while the hero's at a crossroads, does he let it go and get on with his life? Or does he keep pursuing the villain and in that slowly kind of spiral into being possibly a villain himself? Those are my rating tips. Leave things in the comments that you want more tips on. Please 